What's up guys, my name is Ace, and with the life cycle of COD World War 2 coming to a close with Black Ops 4 releasing, it's time to take a look back and reflect on the game. We've already done part 1 to this, where I talked about all the things that I felt COD World War 2 did right, now it's time to get into part 2, this is going to be my list for the main things that I personally feel they did wrong. Now of course, these are just my opinions, and it may not cover every little minor nitpicky thing that I could possibly think of the game, especially things that were a problem early on in the game's life cycle that I've basically just completely forgotten about. I will bring up some things from the early life cycle because there were some major things wrong, but this is just going to be my personal list for the things that really stood out to me that Sledgehammer did wrong with this game. Now I also want to preface this video by saying that while I still do enjoy COD World War II from time to time, just like I enjoy every Call of Duty game, I don't think I would even put this game in my top 5 list. I get some enjoyments out of it, and I can play it for a couple hours at a time, but it just doesn't hold my attention like many of the previous Call of Duty games have. So let's hop into the first thing I have on my list here, keeping in mind it's in no particular order. This is a lack of content at launch. This game launched with 9 regular multiplayer maps. That is by far the lowest amount of regular multiplayer maps that we've seen in a Call of Duty game ever. Normally we see somewhere between about 13 to 17 multiplayer maps, so 9 to me is just completely unacceptable. Now I know some people will point to the fact that they have the war game mode, which I do like the war game mode, I do like the addition of that, and it's one of the things I mentioned in what they did right. However, I don't like the fact that that war mode took away from the regular multiplayer experience and the amount of content we had for regular multiplayer. So the fact that we had three war maps at launch, to me, doesn't make up for the fact that we only had nine regular multiplayer maps. Speaking of maps, this actually brings us to the next point. I'm generally not a fan of the maps in this game. Now there are several that I can pick out that I really enjoy, and I think they are actually great maps. But having said that, we only had nine maps at launch, and there's also a bunch of maps that I feel are not very good, or I personally really don't like them, and some of them I think are objectively poorly designed maps for a Call of Duty game. One example of this is USS Texas. This is one of the maps that I have been most outspoken about, and it's not that I don't have good games on USS Texas from time to time, I just think it's a poorly designed map. In my opinion, it's too narrow, it doesn't offer any sort of viable flank routes, the spawn traps are absolutely terrible because there isn't much room to get out of spawn, there isn't a viable route out of spawn or into spawns. And to top it all off, we have power positions overlooking the spawn areas, as well as power positions within the spawn areas. So what this leads to in a lot of games is people camping the spawn of other people, and people camping in their own spawn, trying to defend themselves there. In my opinion, this is objectively bad map design, and I really dislike this one probably the most out of all of the launch maps at least. There's a few other ones that I wasn't a really big fan of, but the overall gist of what I'm trying to say here is there are very few maps in this game that I get excited to play. Far too often when I find myself voting between two maps, I feel like I'm choosing the lesser of two evils. And this is why this is one of the main points I wanted to cover on this list. Moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, this was a really rocky launch. COD World War II definitely had the worst launch in Call of Duty history, at least from what I can remember. The game was essentially unplayable for the first couple days for a lot of people, like they literally couldn't get past a loading screen. The headquarters was a huge mess, that one didn't launch smooth at all. For the second week I believe it was, they had dedicated servers completely offline so everybody was playing on a listen server with player hosts. In addition to that, especially at launch, the loading times were absolutely awful. The spectating glitch actually lasted much longer than just launch. That was something that lasted quite a long time, and some people still experience it, but I think at least now that's generally rare, so they have resolved a lot of these issues, but they did have a very rough launch for this game. Another big complaint I have towards the beginning of the game's life cycle is the fact that it didn't seem like they were listening and they weren't reacting quickly to player feedback. Just a few quick examples of this, you guys already probably know this if you played it from launch. Flinch was a big issue that took far too long in my opinion to get resolved. Sprint out time, another massive issue that a ton of people were talking about. Sledgehammer was getting bombarded by sprint out complaints. It took them many, many months to get this resolved. And health regeneration is another one. Now there's a bunch of smaller things as well, but those are like the three main ones I can think of where the community was in uproar about this, and it was clearly affecting gameplay, and people were actually leaving the game because of these issues. Now just to be clear, when I'm talking about these complaints, I'm talking about the Conjury era of COD World War II. 
After Michael Condry left and the new leadership took over, I gotta give credit where credit's due. Sledgehammer has been doing a much, much better job at addressing the community and their complaints and their issues. They've made a ton of big changes like the Divisions update. That was a massive overhaul. And I feel like that was a big pivot point for this game where it started improving. And I said this in the first part of this video series, I really wish the game could have launched in that Divisions update state. I think it would have been significantly better and I do have to give props to the Sledgehammer team for listening to the community and making those massive changes. Moving on to the next thing on my list, and this one is very subjective. Of course, feel free to disagree with me on this, but I feel the headquarters was an unnecessary gimmick. Certain elements within the headquarters I really enjoyed, like the 1v1 pit, the firing range, the fact that you could get orders and contracts. I think all of that is awesome. I just feel it's completely unnecessary to have a headquarters area when you could put all of those things within menus. Now I do understand what they were going for there. They wanted you to be able to show off your uniforms. They wanted to encourage the supply drop sales because you see other people opening supply drops. I get that. I just personally feel like they would have been much better off spending resources elsewhere, like more multiplayer maps, instead of focusing on the headquarters. Something that kind of goes along with the headquarters system that I don't enjoy in this game, this is social score. I feel like this is a completely unnecessary grind that isn't very fulfilling or rewarding. And just in general, I don't like how they organize the social score system. It takes forever to level up, especially when you get towards those last few levels, and the rewards just aren't worth it. Plus, for the most part, the social score that you're earning, you get from standing still in the headquarters, you get from AFKing. You don't really have too much personal control over your social score. For the most part, it just relies on other people giving you a commend, which doesn't do anything for them. And overall, I feel like this social score system is completely unnecessary. Now again, I feel like they implemented the social score system in an attempt to encourage supply drop sales because it makes it so you want to open supply drops near other players. You want to spend time in the headquarters. The more people watching other people open supply drops, the more likely they are to maybe be interested in buying supply drops, so I can kind of see what they're going for with that. But overall, I feel like it didn't really add much to the game, and it was an unnecessary gimmick. So next up, something that I really dislike about World War II, especially from the beginning of the game, again, this is something that has improved significantly over time, this is the Division System. At launch, I really didn't like the Division System. I felt like it was way too limiting, and it actually eliminated certain playstyles completely from the game, like the full stealth playstyle. At launch, it was literally impossible to have a suppressor, stay off the radar, as well as have quieter footsteps. Even though I'm not somebody that tends to play with a stealth playstyle, I don't see the need to completely eliminate that. I think there should definitely be some trade-offs to having that full stealth, but I think it should be a possibility within your class. Aside from that as well, just in general, I didn't like the fact that it was basically choose these cookie cutter classes and you yourself don't really have a whole lot of control over that, like we've been used to in the past. I think giving players more control over their player is much better than taking away options from them and forcing them into certain roles. Another thing that I really didn't like about the division system, and I still don't like about the division system, is the fact that everybody spawns in with a lethal and a tactical, which leads to a lot of grenade spam, which kind of forces armored and hunker on you. This is why I prefer the pick 10 system. I feel like it's a vastly superior system. It allows you to customize your soldier exactly how you want them to be customized, but those will come with trade-offs. And I think that's a much better way to handle things. It also led to a lot less nade spam because a lot of players would much rather have an extra attachment or an extra perk rather than a grenade that they get to use once every life. Now I will admit that with the divisions update when they completely overhauled that, I think the division system improved very significantly and I really don't mind it too much anymore. But having said that, I definitely still prefer a pick 10 style system, and I don't think the division system was a particularly good idea, especially in the state it was in at launch. Moving on to the next thing I have on my list, this one's actually kind of the reverse of a lot of what we've been talking about, where I feel this was better at launch, but then it got worse over time, and it's not in a good state in its current state. This is footstep sounds. Now this is a relatively controversial area, and I know there's people on both sides of the issue. Some people think that footstep sounds shouldn't be in there at all because people with headsets shouldn't get an advantage. But in my opinion, I feel footsteps should be something that will at least give you an indication of somebody that's sneaking up behind you if they didn't choose to use some sort of a footstep dampening perk like the Mountain Division or Inconspicuous. Now to be clear, I don't think footsteps should be extremely loud. It shouldn't be a crutch for headset users where they can just rely on those footstep sounds and nobody can get within a radius of them without them being discovered. But I do feel like footsteps without those footstep dampening perks 
should be somewhat audible, and I personally can't remember the last time that my life has been saved because somebody was trying to sneak up behind me without using a footstep dampening perk. More often than not, in these situations where somebody does happen to sneak up on me, they don't have those footstep dampening perks, and they're able to run right up on me without me having any idea what happened until I'm already dead. So I personally think there needs to be a happy middle ground here. I think footsteps should be audible in some situations. You shouldn't be able to really rely on it, but it should be something that actually plays a factor in the game and something that you have to think about if you're flanking enemies and you didn't decide to put that footstep dampening perk on your class. It's something that you should have to consider as you're going on the flank. It's one of the trade-offs that you make. So again, very subjective and relatively nitpicky, but it is something I wanted to mention on this list. This brings us to the next thing in COD World War II that I feel Sledgehammer didn't handle very well in general. This is score streaks. A lot of the score streaks in this game are underwhelming or they don't seem to make much sense or they're basically just seem completely useless. Now, of course, not all of them are terrible, and they have made improvements throughout the year, but I just feel like, in general, it was a bad year for score streaks. A few things that stand out is, like, the Mortar Strike, for instance. Even after all the buffs, aside from shipment, the Mortar Strike really is underwhelming for the cost that it is to earn. When you compare it to something like the Fighter Pilot or the Glide Bomb, it's not nearly as good as those, in my opinion, yet it costs more score to earn. Another example of this is the Counter Recon plane. I feel like they didn't need to change things up here. I think it would have been much better to have Counter Recon work like it's always worked in previous Call of Duty games, where it actually scrambles the enemy's radar. Even if that meant that they had to make it a bit more expensive to earn, I feel like it would have actually been a worthwhile streak to use. As it is right now, I find myself just using Specialist on basically every class I play with, because for a lot of the streaks in the game, I feel like it's just a waste of my time to call them in, because they're not likely to do very well, and I feel much more confident just getting more kills with my gun in the same amount of time it would take. So in general, I feel like score streaks, especially in the beginning of the life cycle of the game, were just way too underwhelming. Another thing that goes into the score streak topic is Dom50. This is something we had to deal with for a very long time, even though... In the beta, it was very clear that people wanted 100 score per kill in Domination, or at the very least 75, yet they stuck with Dom 50, or 50 score per kill. This meant that to earn the highest streak in the game, I believe it was a 34 kill streak you needed in order to earn that, or we could say roughly like 25 kill streak with some objective play mixed in there. That is absolutely ridiculous for just earning the highest streak in the game. And it's not like the highest streak in the game was the best highest streak that we've ever seen in Call of Duty. It was actually relatively underwhelming, especially if you earned it for going on a 30 kill streak. So Dom50, that was a huge problem. Now, yes, they did fix it, but it took them way too long to fix that when it was very clear that the majority of players wanted at least Dom75 or Dom100. So that was an absolute mess at launch in my opinion, and it pretty much ruined Domination for me for a very large portion of this game's life cycle. I used to love Domination, but I didn't find it rewarding to play Dom50. This brings us to the next thing that relates to score streaks, and you guys probably guessed that it was going to be in this video, Requisitions. I've talked about this in great detail enough before, so I don't want to get into it too much, but I am firmly against a Requisition style perk in Call of Duty. I'm totally cool with non-lethal support style streaks for those players that aren't confident going on longer streaks. That's fine, if they want to help their team out, they don't really have the skill or the confidence to go on longer streaks. I don't mind them calling in recon planes all game long. The high-end lethal streaks on the other hand, I feel should be completely unattainable unless you actually go on a streak or you can get it through a care package. The care package should be the route for those lesser skilled players to have a chance of trying out those higher streaks without having people spamming those high-end streaks every game after I've been killing them consistently throughout the game. One of the biggest reasons I feel Call of Duty's been so successful throughout the years is their reward system. The score streaks or the kill streaks or the point streaks, depending on the game that you're playing, those are what give people the high that they chase every game, and those are what push people to want to improve at the game. When you start handing those out just for putting in effort and not really having any sort of exceptional gameplay, it completely devalues that reward system, and it gets so frustrating when you actually earn one of those high-end streaks by going on a streak, only to see two or three other people call in that exact streak, even though you've been consistently taking them off their streak and killing them throughout the game. Now admittedly, since they nerfed requisitions, even though it wasn't technically a nerf for domination, I don't really see requisitions all that often anymore outside of the shipment playlist. Having said that, I still wanted to bring it up here because I am fundamentally against a requisition-style streak, and we did have to deal with that in Domination and Hardpoint especially for a very good portion of the year. Next up, I wanted to move on to an area that's really different for everyone, so I can only really speak to my personal experience with this, and this is Connections. 
Now I do want to be clear here that with a fast paced Twitch style shooter that Call of Duty is, I always expect some amount of inconsistency in connections, and I do expect to run into bad lobbies and just bad situations. However, I feel like with COD World War II, I'm running into a lot more inconsistency than I'm used to with previous years of Call of Duty. With Infinite Warfare, for instance, I felt like my connections in general were great throughout the entire life cycle of the game. I had very few complaints. I had a few bad lobbies here and there, but overall it was good. Whereas with COD World War II, I feel like I'm flipping a coin every time I get into a game, even if it's the same lobby I was just playing against the game before. I don't know entirely why this happens, but it is very frustrating dealing with such big inconsistencies because every time I load up a map, I have very little confidence that I'm going to have a great connection that game. Of course, I'm always crossing my fingers and hoping for that, and sometimes it pays off, but other times I find it's just terrible and practically unplayable. So finally, one last thing that I have on my list, and this one relates more so to recent times with this game, this has to do with the order system. Now, if you guys have watched the first part where I talked about everything they did right, in general, I really like the order system. I like the fact that there's something to grind towards every day, and I think it's great. It keeps players engaged. However, recently, I have a specific complaint about this order system that just seems to be getting worse and worse. This is the consistent number of orders that are simply complete X number of matches. I find this to be so, so frustrating, especially when it's a daily order that's asking you to complete like 35 matches in one day. That completely takes away from that daily order system, and I really strongly dislike that. Now, I suspect the reason that they like giving us these orders is it actually does lead to increased playtime and increased engagement in the game. I think if they look at their global stats when they have those daily orders active, I think they probably do see an increase in playtime and engagement. However, I feel like these orders are very draining and I really wish they would get away from these and never do these again. I'm alright with that being for like a special order or maybe a weekly order, that's totally fine. But when you're bombarding our daily orders with that, it actually pushes me away from the game because it's like, that's just ridiculous. I don't have time to play 35 games today, so I'm not even going to try doing that. Or I'll activate it and complete it throughout the week, but then I miss out on all the other daily orders that come out throughout the week. And I just find that to be really frustrating. Admittedly, this one's relatively nitpicky, but I feel like they did kind of destroy the daily order system by doing this, and I really wanted to bring that up. So with that, that's going to wrap it up for everything that I had on my list. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not necessarily an exhaustive list of everything I didn't like about this game, so... I know there's probably going to be people saying like, I can't believe you didn't mention this. How did you not mention that? It may not be that I disagree with you on that point. It likely just didn't come to my mind as I was making this list. So with that, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you think COD World War II did wrong? Normally, I really like to encourage positivity on this channel, but this is going to be the one time where you can just let it out, let out your frustrations about the game. But one thing I will ask is at least keep your comments directed towards the game, not the developers themselves. No need to attack other people for this. Just focus on the game and what you disliked about it. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.